Hi makers, in this video series I will show you how to make a completely autonomous vertical farm. The brain of it is an Arduino Nano, so the coding is very basic, even for a complete beginner. The code, shopping list and schematics are as always in the video description below. All in all it's really fun and surprisingly easy to build. Let's get started. So you want to start with the main structure. The part where we will install the electronics and watering system will come out next weekend, so stay tuned for that. So I started off with some lumber. I bought 10 45 by 45 mm 120 cm long lengths, but ended up only using 9 of them. Always smart to have an extra just in case, I guess. I cut two 30 by 30 cm MDF sheets and used 60 mm long wood screws to hold everything together. You will also need a screw bit for the screws and a drill bit. I ended up breaking three of them. Now I'm screwed. Last but not least you will need some microfiber cloth and some baby diapers. I'll explain why in a bit. I took the first length and marked out 21 cm sections. 21 because the cloth in my case is 30 by 30 cm and the lumber is 4.5 cm wide times 2 because we have 2 on each side of each cross piece. So I marked at 21, 42, 63, 84 and 105 cm. I cut them with the circular saw. I repeated on 3 more lengths to get a total of 20 pieces. Unfortunately most of the hyperlapse footage got lost but the principle is the same as before. I then took all of the pieces and smoothened down the ends with an electric sander. By the time I finished it already got dark so I decided to call it today. Next day I lay down 4 lengths of lumber next to each other. I then marked each at 2.25, 28, 56, 84 and 117 0.75 cm. I also mark them on each of the faces. The cross pieces will be secured to the vertical length with one screw on one side and with two on the other. This way the screws won't go into each other. So I started drilling the holes. In the end of this step I managed to break three drill bits. I then put two cross pieces under the ends of a length. I clamped them in place temporarily like this but I'm sure there is a better way. I drove in two screws into each piece. I repeated with the other three lengths. Next I began to assemble the outer frame. This time I only drove in one screw into each piece. When it was done I took one of the MDFs and placed it on top of the structure and drilled some pilot holes in it. I then secured the sheet to the frame with four screws. I then noticed that there was a slight unwanted curve. So I took a small piece of wood and secured it under one of the corners with a screw. This fixed most of the problems. I then began laying down the cross pieces one after another, drilling pilot holes and screwing them in place in the same pattern as before. The previously added markings were helpful because this way I know where the center of each piece need to be aligned. Lastly, I secured the second MDF to the top by drilling four pilot holes and screwing screws into them. I then took it inside and placed it in the corner of my room. So at this point your vertical farm should look something like this. Of course you can make it taller and wider to fit more plants, but I'm going with this since I have very little space to work with. Next I gather the materials needed for the next step, the baby diapers and the microfiber cloth. I also took this plastic bag. I will use the plastic bag to cover the wood and the MDF. I lay down three pieces of fabric and cut off the tags. I then cut out small squares from each corner. After that I laid one on the top level. 
I use some small nails to hold it in place. This also allows changes to be made in the future, for example adjusting the fabric so it can hold more soil. I repeat it on two more levels. Since the bottom level will be deeper, I didn't use fabric. Instead, I secured the plastic bag to the wood with some hot glue. I took a pair of scissors and trimmed away any extra plastic. I unpacked the diapers and cut along the side of one, opening it up. I removed the content and shook it to get all of the hydrogel powder out. I repeated on a few more and began to fill the levers. However, don't put too much since it will expand quite significantly. So you may ask, why did you use diapers instead of regular soil? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Most of it is actually because it's kind of cool. Here I have two cups, one with completely dried out soil and the other with the stuff in the diaper. It's also dry. You see on the papers that both are dry, so I will add equal amount of water to both of them. Notice that the diaper soaks in the water much faster while I need to work it into the regular soil. After around half a minute, I tested their dryness again. The diaper stuff was almost completely dry on the top, while the soil was very wet. So I'm not an expert in this, but I think it means that the diaper can hold much more water, using less in the long run. But we lose one important thing with the regular soil, the nutrients. So make sure you use a nutrient liquid mixed with water. I then prepared for planting the seeds by pre-watering the levels. So the plan is that the bottom level, which is the deeper, I will plant the runner beans and salad. On the level above I will plant lemon balm and peppermint, on level 3 arugula and wild strawberries, and on the top level I planted some cress and sprout seeds. So I started planting the seeds. This required some time. I then made some labels and printed them out. Oh, and this is my cat, Helix. I used double sided tape for the labels. I stuck them in place. That was all for this video. If you haven't already, then subscribe to be the first who watches part 2 where we will install the watering system and the life for the plants. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next weekend.